I have seen so many videos trying to tell you how to actually get the score of your dreams, how to get 330 plus, how to get 320 plus. I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm going to tell you exactly what the blueprint was that I personally used in order to score my score. That's a 329 as you can see. But I promise you, you'll get to know that. I, pro I promise you that you don't need any other video. But what I want from you is your undivided attention for the next 10 minutes. And you watch this video to the end. And I will make sure that you get the score of your dreams in the verbal section. You will get over 160, over 150, whatever you're, you're personally dreaming for. All right? Great. Now that I have your attention, let's begin. First off, if you've seen this GRE video, by, I don't want to name the consultancy, but there's a whole lot of consultancies that are putting out videos uh, how to get a 160 plus on the uh, vocabulary section of the GRE. And they basically, sometimes people, you know, kind of mislead you so much. I want to just make sure that you have this example in mind. So they're telling you that do more than 1800 GRE words and basically you will score over 160 plus on your verbal section. Let me tell you, this is dead wrong. This doesn't work. I have personally prepared for the GRE for about a year and this is the worst advice that anyone can give you. I know the GRE in and out and trust me when I say this, nothing like that exists. Let me tell you why. The number of words that you need to do is a very relative concept, all right? Depending on the kind of exposure you have had and Really, I have had a different kind of an exposure. You have had a, had a different kind of an exposure. Maybe I know 20% of the words that the GRE is already testing me on. Maybe you know 40%. So it's a totally different scenario for everyone, all right? Maybe I need to learn, you know, in, if, if we follow that 20, 40% rule, I need to learn more than 2,000 words, more than 2,500 words, and maybe you just need to do 1,500 words. So. That's so, so important. You need to understand the relative concept over here. And it's not just about words, it's about everything you see. People are going to mislead you. You will see a whole lot of videos, even if they have upwards, even if, even if they have, you know, uh, a lot of subscribers, anything. Don't bother to believe people unless they can give you proof for it, all right? You can see my scores, they are proof for it. Sometimes, you know, these consultants, they have never even taken the GRE themselves and they are guiding you. I mean, how ridiculous is that, right? Anyway, now that we have that out of the way, I mean, I don't care about how many students you have taught. I don't care about how many students you have, you know, coached. If you haven't taken it personally, you somehow lack the understanding it takes to actually really comprehend what is going on and how you should really manage your schedule. I never really went to a coaching. I never went to any institute. I completely prepared on my own and I was very intermittent. Even then, I scored a 161 on my verbal section. All right. I was intermittent at the beginning, by the way, not at the end when I was preparing like crazy because I knew I had my GRE in one month. I had to prepare. So I, I put in all my effort into that. All right, let me tell you the blueprint to follow. Now that you know, there's no number of words I can give you. I personally probably did over 3000 words. I have a link to my dictionary. I will probably, you know, there's a way to do the words. I, I'll tell you about it in the video itself. So let's begin with it. The first thing I want you to do, doesn't matter if you know how the GI works, doesn't matter if you are a complete novice, or maybe you do know some uh, the question types in general. That's great, good for you. The first thing I did, the day I started preparing for the GRE, this is the plan I followed, all right? Point to point, trust me, I'm giving you everything over here, so pay attention right now, all right? The first thing I did, I bought the GRE 5 pound book, all right? I'm not saying that's the only book I did. I did a lot more. I have a video on that specifically, each and every book I followed, but I bought that book and I took the diagnostic test, the GRE verbal section diagnostic test, all right? I didn't time it. I still remember I took probably more than 30 minutes. But again, since you don't really know the meaning of the words, since you don't know how the questions are, the important thing is that you familiarize yourself with the concept, with the question types, and you see really where you stand. All right. I personally scored like on four questions out of those 20. So four questions out of those 20 questions were correct in my case. And it was so devastating for me because I used to be so good. I used to breathe in English. I used to think that, man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so good. GRE is going to be so easy for me. I was dead wrong. 
I scored very badly on that test. I saw my scores, they were probably around 147 or something. Uh, I was like, all right, this is where I am. And, and I knew I wanted to go above 155 at first. And then I kind of worked my way up there to 161. All right. Anyway, so it's really important to understand right now where you stand. doesn't matter if you know the question types or not, because it's so important to be able to understand how much work you need to put in. And it's directly proportional to the amount of points that you need to go up. All right. Great. So now that you know your position, write that down, make sure that you never forget it, never ever forget it, all right? We're gonna track your position every two weeks, you're gonna take a mock test. If you do not know where, which mock test to take, if you do not know which are the best mock tests, again, I have a video for that. You can again refer to that best mock test, so, something like that video on my channel, all right? Great, now that I familiarized myself with the mock test scores, I know that I'm doing this badly, I need to prepare so much better than that. So what I did was I basically started with familiarizing myself with the question types. So how would you do that? Take any four or five questions. Doesn't matter which book you take it from. It can be the five pound book. It can be the Princeton 1014. It can be really anything, ETS, whatever you want. ETS is probably the best source when you're starting out because once you're prepared, it, it gets way too easy sometimes. But ETS is the best book, all right? So what you want to do is Familiarize yourself with the question types, understand what the questions are. I never really personally read the theory. The ATS books do have a lot of theory. I never read them. I only did the questions, all right? And I worked on my mistakes. So this is how I did it. Now I know how the questions look. I have familiarized myself. I have done 10 questions of each type. I understand how the GRE works. I know what they're testing me on, all right? Now it's very important that while you're doing these questions, you come across a plethora of words again that's one uh, you come across so many words that you will not know the meaning to all right now at times when I used to solve the five pound book in the beginning I used to do the text completions all right I thought I would do 10 text completions at once and then I would you know just check my scores and mostly it would turn out to be two correct out of ten or something like that why because I never really knew the words it is so important that you understand how these words work because not only are these words important not only are they uh, it's, it's important that you understand the meaning of them it's also important that you understand that they can be used in multiple contexts and you need to understand which one is being used right now all right so what I encourage you to do right now and trust me this is the most important part of my preparation I probably spent 60% of my time just doing this prepare your own dictionary all right you might be amazed, I used to stick papers on the back of my five pound book and every time, you know, I would think that, all right, man, five pages are probably going to be enough to cover all of the words for the GI. But again, you know, I kept on adding more and more pages. Finally, I bought a register because there were so many of them. All right. And how do you get these words? I never, you know, recommend that you go on and read a dictionary or, you know, some sort of a word list or some sort of whatever people use don't use them in my opinion that's crap only if you do not have time right now only if you have your GI in the next one month go through with that but otherwise I never really remember somehow right and I explain this in detail why a dictionary is so important to you and how to actually write these words and how to remember the context I personally used to write the word the meaning a few synonyms and the sentence all right and you can see the personal dictionary that I have you know I, I write them down in different colors so that I remember everything I remember the same sentence again and again and every time I read the words I read the meanings I read the synonyms I read the sentence the sentence kind kind of gets engraved in my mind I always remember that even when I won't remember the meaning you won't believe me the sentence is in my mind it's stuck over there and Something about that is so, so unbelievable because I'm reading the meanings every time but the sentence automatically pops up into, into my mind. And not only does that give me so much more than the meaning, I understand what the meaning is. I also understand how to use that word. I also understand the context, all right? Now, a word might have multiple meanings, right? Write the multiple words, uh, multiple meanings down next to it. Again, you know, more info on that in the video. I've already done a video on that. I don't want to extend this video completely talking about my dictionary. I know how it works and I'm sure you know how it works if you watched it. If you haven't, again, the link will be at the end of this video. You can just go and watch it. Learn 100 words a day. It's called something like that. Okay, great. Now, you know all the question types. 
text completion, sentence equivalence, reading comprehension, and logical reasoning. So you know all of these question types. You have done some, uh, you know, some questions on each of these. Now what I want you to do is, you know, first work on these on time. Do not use a timer. Do not use a clock when you're doing these for the first few weeks. All right. Now that you get familiarized with these questions, now that you understand how these questions work, you will see that your scores kind of significantly boost up because you are understanding how these questions are and you are understanding how to eliminate the you know uh, wrong words if you don't know that again i have a video on that where i personally solve questions with you so you can do you can watch that and you can see how i eliminate the wrong choices and that's the best way to go in my opinion but again if you do not see your scores being boosted up don't worry that was something that happened in my case and let me tell you why it happens it's because most times you know 80 percent of the times you won't know the meaning that's why I used to be so bad at word meanings, I had to learn over 3,500 or something words and that was a crazy amount for me personally because I never thought I would be able to dedicate so much time into learning words. But today I see it as such an advantage because not only does it help me with my, my scores, GRE scores or my TOEFL, but it also helps me in my day to day life when I read books, when I read even you know my curriculum based books. Everything really, it helps me out, I understand so much better. It's so important that you realize that it's not just a chance to get a good grade score, it's a chance to actually boost up a skill for yourself, for your life, all right? Now, if you need any help understanding your weak areas, I go over each one of them and I try to outline each one of them and basically, you know, do questions with you in this video I told you about. Again, I'll put a link to it in the description or put it at the end of this video. But what I want you to do is see how my thought process works on those videos and how I'm really you know working through those questions and you will see and basically I do outline you know three or four most common reasons I show you how you are unable to get to that stage and if this is why you are not able to get to this stage this is your problem all right so this is how I do it and I show you what your problem is in any case if you are able to identify where you are going wrong you are already ahead of 80 percent of the people who are working hard towards their GRE because they do not know where they're going wrong they're allocating the same amount of time to every section it doesn't work like that and let's be realistic come on guys all right personally in my case I used to be so bad at reading comprehensions I used to be bad at everything at first all right and then I, I, I kind of started doing reading comprehensions from the five pound book and I saw that there's a pattern and really, you know, there's a whole lot of things that you need to follow. Like, you know, don't pick the extreme choices and all these stuff. I have all of these points, by the way, listed down in my RC video where I teach you how to really, you know, tackle these and what are the most common problems, some seven to eight problems that you can see. And it will almost wipe out, you know, 50% of your answer choices anyway. So the part that you are left with is again 50% of the answers and that's a lot that counts of, that counts a lot on the GRE. So you only have to choose between 50% of the answers now. All right. So some of these, you know, you, you need to think how these people articulate the questions. Like this is too extreme, but this is never really mentioned in the passage. They're talking about something else. So these are the kind of common mistakes that they try to put out there and people try to pick them even you will pick them at some stage or the other but make sure that you don't do that on your GI you need to you need to put that in your mind so well that every time something like that pops up you see that this is exactly the kind of mistake that they set you up for this is a decoy I'm gonna stay the hell away from it all right this is important and I need you to understand that because this is something that you only understand with experience once you get down to the book and you start solving like completely you know and do 10 questions I don't take I don't care if it takes two hours to do 10 questions but the amount of value you gain from it is immense so even if you have your answers correct even if you get your answers right always always look back at the books explanation and see if your thought process matches up with the book's thought process because again make sure that it's a good book make sure that you're doing this with some you know proven book like ETS or uh, the five pound book so it's really important that you do that after that start doing timed sections because you need to make sure that you are able to generate the same amount of well performance in a timed environment 
And make sure you're doing this all in a GRE based environment. Don't worry about the noise. There will be no background noise in the GRE. Uh, it is the case in the TOEFL at least. But you, you should make sure that you are able to be in a secluded environment. You're working on those questions and re really you can focus and study for three, three, four, three or four hours because the GRE is actually a four hour exam if you, if you really think of it. All right. So you need to maintain the same concentration level and still be able to score the same in a timed environment. That is your next goal. And tr trust me guys, these things, some, of, some, of, some people might think that these are so, so naive and these are so, so obvious, but people don't do that. People don't understand that. If you're, if you're going wrong so badly on the text completions, focus on that. If you're going so wrong on the RCs, focus on that. Don't waste time on things that you're going good with. Maybe, you know, sp spend 20% of your time on that so you can still keep up with that and maybe, you know, improve even further. But it's so important that you spend your time understanding how your thought process is working and how the book's thought process is working in a timed environment and really, you know, work your way up from there. All right. Now that you are ready with that now that this stage is passed you are in a timed environment and you're still able to retain at least you know 80 90 percent of your scores as in the case of you know uh, as compared to the case of an untimed environment well now you're ready to start taking mock tests every two weeks you're gonna take a mock test all right and if you do not understand which mock test to take again like I said I have a video specifically dedicated on that which are the best mock tests to take do not waste your time with any question types that are not GRE based or old GRE format, no need. Trust me, it won't do you any good. There's a software on your laptop probably that gives you RC problems, you know, 150 of them. I, I get it, it's a great software, but don't, don't go with that. Uh, it used to be good, but it's not a GRE format right now. It was, it's based on the older GRE format, so don't do that. Anything that's based on the older GRE format, just stay away from that. All right. Now, we have everything out of the way, we're taking mock tests every two weeks, we're tracking our scores, take an Excel spreadsheet, basically, you know, write, write all the tests down like I have in my case, in my, uh, in my video again on best mock tests, I, I have these, you know, all of these 17 mock tests or something written down, G quant score, your verbal score, just apply a simple formula in the Microsoft Excel, you know, basically, it'll, it'll calculate your total score and your AWS score, of course, do not miss the AWS, by the way. If you do that, again, it will impact your scores. It did in my case. I got a 4.5. I could have easily, easily scored a 5. Very easily. I'm telling you guys. All right. So, all right, you have everything right now. You're practicing. You, you see, basically, you know, your scores will keep increasing until one point. At this point, they will hit a plateau. You won't be able to increase, or even when you increase, it's very low, very, very low. This is the stage where you need to put the most time into your GRE preparation. Hopefully, this stage hits you like one month or you know three, four weeks before your actual GRE test. If you haven't booked your test by this by this date, I encourage you book your test right now because unless you do that you will never be serious for your GRE preparation do it i don't care if you have a job i don't care if you're seven hours uh, if you're working seven hours at kfc doesn't matter whatever you're doing make sure that you book the test you need to take this seriously right now this is the most important stage and nothing less than hard work will work at this stage all right now you need to again see in most cases what will happen is at this stage you have everything really you're not going wrong on most questions your basically you know your scores are distributed evenly and maybe you know you're doing everything RCs and your text completion essays everything is basically 80% correct or something like that now 20% is wrong everywhere but even if there's a 21% wrong in the logical reasoning section focus on that it's very important that you understand that the ETS tests are a little different than most mock tests that you will find so I suggest that you store them for the end and try to take them then so that you can really understand what are your actual scores really the ETS mock test will give you the closest scores no other uh, you know mock test will give you the closest scores uh, as to your actual doomsday score that's your actual GRE day score Anyway, so this is the whole blueprint I followed. I know it's a little abstract. I know you might think that this isn't exactly what you expected. I think you might have wanted me might have wanted me to go into the technical details. Doesn't matter. This is actually the thing that you need the most. And if you don't realize that, it's really high time that you actually start practicing like this. And trust me, you guys, 
I'm telling you, this will work. It works like wonders. It will work for anyone that follows it, truly follows it. All right. Really dedicate yourself, really put in the time, really do as I said in this case. If you need more material, I have more videos on how to pick the best material in which really the proven materials. I've tested a lot of material. Some of it turned out to be absolute crap and I wasted my time actually doing that. But don't do that. I don't, I don't want you guys making the same mistakes as I did. So if I'm telling you something in these videos, it's really out of my own experience. I have put in a lot of time into this. I put in a lot of time into my preparation. And I want you guys to earn something from that. All right. Not just, you know, do the same mistakes as I did. All right, guys. So I hope this video helps you. Please don't go out and watch the videos by consultancies where they tell you that you need to do 1800 words in order to score a 160 plus. That's, that's not realistic. It's not, I mean, even a dumb person can understand that it's a relative scale and I don't know why, how these people work. Anyway, I'm sure you're uh, smart enough to get that. And uh, really, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to contact me, see my whole admits. By the way, I got one admit today. And it was the craziest day. I wanted to make this video in the afternoon. I'm making at 3 a.m. in the night. So it's, it's, it's going to come out tomorrow morning or something like that. But again, thank you for all your support. Thank you for being here. And it's been a great journey. And I'll keep you updated on my Instagram. Again, you know, all my admits and everything. And I'd love to see you in the next one. Please give me all your support again. And thank you.